everyone. Welcome back to Obsessive Proper AZ. We're out today in beautiful Arizona. I'm here with my husband, James. And we've got some products from Sagan Life that uh, they sent to us to review. I've got the Kelly Kettle Trekker, and she's got a... The uh, Sagan Life Extreme water filter. It's a pump and it is a straw. So we're going to go ahead and get on into this, break it down. We want to show you if we think as preppers, it's something that you should have in your stash for prepping needs. So, and I might want to say real quick that, uh, they just sent us this stuff, uh, to try out and give a review on zero money exchange. We're not being paid or asked anything they just asked if we do an honest review so and that's all we will do is an honest review we're going to get review. into these products and see what we think all righty well, Lori's <laughs> off gathering sticks for this deal i wanted to show you what comes included they've got a little nylon bag with a, a pull strap that uh, everything goes into um the kettle itself, and then you've got your fire base. Uh, we'll get into that again here in a minute. That's included. It comes in with a little hobo stove, which kind of hard to see here, but this uh, on top of the fire base makes the hobo stove. I'm reading off the deal here. We've got a uh, little cook set that comes included. Even comes with a little rubber gasket, uh, grommet, whatever you want to call it, so you don't burn your mouth on the cup. Uh, this is the pot, and it has a little pot holder. And so you're basically going to be able to uh, use that, and it would go just like that. So we're going to get into actually using it here. It also looks like it has a, uh, they're calling this a fire base and pot support. Uh, Kind of reminds me of a wing stove, so to speak. Um, looks like you could put it all together. And I don't think there's really a right way or a wrong way to do this. I think it's whatever way you are most comfortable and whatever way works for the situation that you find yourself in using this. Um, pot has a little lid, keep your stuff warm. So let's see what my wife's up to. What'd you find? Well, I got some twigs and things <laughs> and I, that's the great thing about this all you need is just pretty much anything you can light on fire uh, fire source is very minimal that's what keeps it kind of discreet um, burns Cow dung. yeah you, you can use anything now I would say definitely have some uh, fuel tablets of some sort in your preps because I actually took this up north in the rain a couple of weeks ago and everything was soaked pine cones were soaked and i had tablets i didn't want to dig them out i got lazy and i didn't use it but have something that you can use if everything around you is wet and you know if you're a prepper if you don't know simple thing like a cotton ball with vaseline petroleum jelly wrapped up in it is a great tender also dryer lint things like that put in like the old 35 millimeter cases i don't even know if you have any of those around or medication cases ziploc bag and that have that with your kettle and that is great also tender and it only takes what three five minutes to get this thing boiling yeah another little piece when i was going through the pieces i missed was the grate which is pretty cool because if you wanted to cook like a little piece of meat or something like that you could use that as well i don't again i don't think there's a right way or a there's wrong way not. to use this it's strictly what's going to work best for you me personally i would probably never use this that's just me and then also you have like this wing stove part that goes on top of the kettle and then you can put your little cook kit where's your cook kit over there yeah you could set you know your pot up there get or... that to boiling so there's a lot of ways to use the kelly kettle Ideally, what I like is the boiling of the water. So if you're in a place that you don't have a straw or anything like that and you're concerned with the water source, then just simply by boiling water, if you bring things like, I've got some uh, dehydrated freeze-dried stuff here, some turkey, some dehydrated. You can make your own dehydrated foods packs and then have them with your kit or something like a mountain house. 
on another video, you'll see she did meals in a jar in a bucket. <clears throat> and those things, I know some of them are like 12 years old. They're just as good now as the day she met them or made them. And it's kind of funny because the jar is very useful. And not to get off on another tangent, but there's people that say, oh, why do you have a glass jar? It comes in freaking handy. And Especially this, if you need to store water. This is not bug out to the hills and hide from people food, okay? This is just a handy way to have food storage with a jar that you can use, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna get started and start making a little fire. We're gonna use the fire base here. And you can see it's got the little vent air holes here. And you can also stick tinder in there or drop it down from the top of the kettle. But I'm gonna start with this. And I've uh, got some sticks in here and I might have to break them down. This thing's pretty small. And basically I'm gonna use some of this dry brush and we're gonna get a little fire going. And I'll get the camera in on it so you can see how easy it is to start this. Yep. Again, as preppers, we're always looking. You know, people look at doomsday scenarios. It doesn't necessarily have to be a doomsday scenario. It could be something where your power's off at your house. You have no propane, propane or electricity. So little things like this come in handy. Backpackers, if you have to have a bug out bag, we're looking at a little over two pounds for the entire kit. Now we have the smaller model, like James had mentioned earlier. There's four models and there are larger models. And so having something like this come in super handy and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get this get the camera on it so you can see what's going on and uh, we'll keep going with the video okay so you can see the kettles going now what you want to do is you want to fill your water in this hole about a half inch underneath the fill line and you can see this thing it's it's, it's a hot. rocket stove let me get some more water to keep it going, you can just add right in the top, real easy. It's so hot, my hair's in my face. <laughs> yeah, this thing gets going quick. I might have put in a little bit extra water. The only reason why you don't want to put the water all the way to the top is it can boil over and then it'll put your fire out. So, but I was, and then also we use bottled water. We're not set up to go down here and get the water and, and show you. So we just use bottled water. But then once this is done, you want to put your stopper in. You want to have your, you don't want to put it in super tight, but you see there's an arrow here. And then what that does, it'll whistle when your water is boiling. You can feel the heat that it puts It's a on. lot of heat. Yeah. And I suppose you could, you know, you could use whatever tender you wanted and manage the fire if you were worried about the smoke. And I saw in other reviews that people had done where they were talking about being very discreet and so forth. I mean, I think, yeah, you, if you were trying to be discreet, it's it definitely on the mesquite. I mean, we're using mesquite, so we're definitely going to get a little bit more smoke. Uh, than you normally would but I don't think it's bad if you're trying to like not have people know you're around I don't think this is a whole lot of smoke people are not going to not if you were in a you know wooded yeah. area or yeah. something like yeah. that it's not not drastic by any means but you know within three to five minutes we're gonna have hot hot water so you don't have to use your filtered water because if you get it to a boiling point you know that your water's good to drink make your coffees make your mountain house I'm gonna make me, I love coffee, so I'm gonna make me a cup of coffee. I don't know here. if I, I brought myself hot chocolate. But it's hot out. It's Arizona. We're the end of October and it's what, 90 degrees out? 80? Something like that. Still a little it warm was out. Today. Yeah. This is the neatest feature, in my opinion, about this whole idea is being able to feed your fire source. It's definitely a hot burning. Just the way that it's made to funnel it, it's a rocket stove and it definitely is oh, very, it's hot. very hot. But I think that's pretty cool. Um, you could also, where's the little tea stand at? That little thingy there. This? Like we said, you could put this over the top of it. You hear that? You could do that like that. And cook with something on that. So we're done. Our water is hot. It's telling us it's hot. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. All right. We're gonna go ahead with two hands and we're gonna lift this off our flame. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get the hobo stove. I'm gonna put this on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and fry up an egg and I'm showing you that. Water, we're gonna make us some coffee. And what you're gonna do is hold this now that it's not on the flame. And then we're gonna use our chain. And that is what's going to pour the water and keep you from burning yourself. That's good. That is hot, hot water. And then by having this plug, we put it back in, and that will keep our water hot in this stainless steel container for quite some time. Now here we've got our hobo stove. I'm gonna try, whoop, that's a little hot. Get some things in here. I mean, it really uses not a whole lot of fuel source. And that's something like in third world countries, they run short on fuel. Haiti, they've chopped down all the trees and things, and so you have to like have things that do not use a lot of fuel source. So something simple like this definitely works. So I have a little cast iron pan that I put on the hobo stove. I've got a little bacon grease, an egg. We're gonna go ahead and crack this in here. Probably could be a little bit more level. Well, yeah, because it's dripping out on the ground, but that's okay. But we've got some bacon grease, and this is cooking this egg up perfect. Now these little cast iron pans, if you pay attention to the holiday season, that's when you want to find them. They work great for preppers, get out bags, things like that, the bug out bags. Normally where they're at is in the holiday section, they have cookie mixes with it for a gift. So it comes with a little cast iron pan, a cookie mix, or let's say like a dip mix. Um, and that's where you'll find these little cast iron pans. They work great for preppers. Let's get some more fuel in here so we make sure we don't burn out. And I'm just oh, putting stuff in on the side. Yep, it's good. You know. And you probably want to make sure that you have a little bit of the vent hole at the top so it's not completely smothering this. We always want to have a little bit of an airflow. I'm going to go ahead and flip this egg. I wanted it poached. <laughs> and definitely it would cook faster if I had scrambled it, but I'm trying to have a little bit of a yolk and uh, got a tortilla here. I'm going to crack the yolk a little bit. You want to pull that, babe? I've got two tortillas. Now, in your preps also that you can have in small containers is a little bit of lard. Um, something like that so that you can oil your pans. Lard's going to last a long time. So get something like that you can have in your preps. This thing's hot. Yeah, it, it heated that. I'm not sure if you can hear it sizzling. two eggs but I dropped one on the ground. <laughs> Pretty easy to cook an egg. You could get a lot more creative. I mean I think ideally this setup is great if you've got dried food you're trying to rehydrate. Freeze or, dry. Mm -hmm. you know. But the fact that it has multiple uses that you can you can use it as an open fire cook. Um, a little tip from me, when you have cast iron like this and you've got a stream or something, you have no way to wash it. I grew up on the beaches down in Mexico, camping, take it to the shoreline, use the dirt or the sand. That will clean your, your food items, your cups and everything. Rinse it with the stream and you're good to go. So anyways, this was great. We didn't put the coffee in the cup. You get the idea. You can sit and have a great drink. Um, we're going to get next to the water, the Sagan Life Straw Extra, and show you the features on that. But I, I like the kettle, Kelly kettle. Again, I don't, as far as a rocket stove goes, I don't think you can beat it. That thing was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And for the pro, you know the price might be a little pricey, but you have to decide what works for you, what's going to work for you. Um, and, and, and James is right. 
depending on where you're at, if you've got fuel sources that have been saturated with water, it would be hard. A few of the things, the twigs and things that we pulled were green, um, a little harder to catch on fire. So having tinder, things like that, um, the, the, the uh, cotton balls or lint, something like that would help the fire go, start going. Yeah. So I gotta say, this little orange deal, I thought was kind of stupid, but this, this, this cup gets so hot that's what it's intended for so that you could not burn your mouth but uh, they thought of a lot of little stuff here pretty cool so we wanted to show you real quickly the Sagan Life Extra now Sagan Life is in the United States in California and they distribute the Kelly Kettle which is from Ireland so just as a distributor I will leave those links down below if you're interested in the Kelly Kettle or the Extra now they wanted us to do the review on the Extra I'm not going to use it because I'm going to keep it for my preps I was actually excited to get this straw I know it's going to work I, um, people want to know like your history, what you know about certain items. I have been in the camping surplus military industry my entire life. I have sold so many different water filtration systems from the straws to the tablets to the pumps. And this is one of the nicer units. Now what it comes with, which it makes it kind of neat, is there is a pump system like this that you attach. You have four foot length of your straw your hose system and by having the pump system you can pump out your water to do more volume so if you're not just wanting to do a you know a quick drink you can fill up your water bottles you can fill up more items and by having the pump that works great if you don't want to use the pump then you have the straw system so it has a bite valve and everything is quick release to put in and attach everything so it just automatically clips in and then you have it where you can put it hook it to your filter the filter uses a magnetic source so I don't know because I just don't know the whole internals of it but it is magnetized and that is how it filters the water it's not like other filters that have like the material in it and you can get like bacteria and growth put like that grows into that so if you use those kind of filters I always tell everybody to go home flush those filters out store them in a refrigerator to keep the bacteria from growing on your extreme the Sagan life stuff you do not need to do that you just let it completely dry out and it's good till the next time and what makes these little straws in these little units so great from Sagan life is that it is an end of use certificate meaning what does that mean that they have been tested by a third party and it is that the third party tested it for every 25 gallons they tested make sure the water was good and they found that Sagan straw the extra will pump 250 gallons guaranteed a lot of the little straws like what the Aquamira straw like the uh, the frontier 30 gallons 30 gallons of water for $12 so for 48 I mean to try to get 250 gallons you'd have to spend $60 plus on the straws what makes them nice is that they're portable and they're lightweight but you never really know how much you're filtering through and there has been questions of how do you know how much it doesn't make a difference as long as this is filtering water even one drop it is still filtering water and it is a 99.99 .99 guarantee on your filtration si system it filters against giardia cryptos I'm probably gonna slaughter cryptosporum um, no cryptosporidium um, E. coli viruses bacteria it does it all and so as long as it is filtering it is good to go and now on the end of life certificate it says that it is up to 250 gallons but they're being generous on that it goes way past the 250 gallons so if you're interested and you want to see all the specs on it I will leave them down below in the description another thing I wanted to add real quick is the quality like if you're familiar with uh, camelbacks and so forth that have these kind of bite valves you, there, there are generic versions and they're definitely different than like let's say the camelback brand this is all really high quality plastic the rubber everything it just is it you can tell it, it is I mean this is the pump system in itself 
Where's um, the bite belt? All the locks, everything is, it's just rock solid. Just to give you an idea up close. On off valve, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's really squared away. You don't even really need this the pump, for, yeah. for certain certain things. You could just plug the filter in there. Um, and I just saw a canoe and kayaker go by, and uh, you can literally just throw it off the side of the boat. The four foot of hose. You don't have to bend over. You yeah. don't. You, I mean, even when you're That's trying to pump handy. the water, you don't have to bend over. Four foot of hose. Now, the only suggestion I have is on any filter. I don't care what it is. If, if you clog that filter, if you're not screening your water, then you're gonna clog that filter faster. So my only recommendation is to use something like cheesecloth. I've got this in my back in my pocket here. I'm gonna come up and show you because the problem is, is on any filter, you're gonna get debris into the filter, obviously. So if you took a little bag like this that is mesh and you tied it around, then this is gonna get all the debris and it's not gonna go instantaneously into your filter. Also, if you don't have something like that and you don't have cheesecloth, use a t-shirt, filter your water first. So we're gonna leave it there. We wanna thank Sagan Life for sending this to let us do a review. Um, overall, I like both items real well. Um, solid. Sagan Life. If you're interested in, in any of the products, they carry other filters, water bottles, things like that. Also larger units, inline water filtration. I'll leave those descriptions down below. Um, and we'll leave it there. We hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. If you did, please subscribe if you want to be notified for future videos. Ring, Ring the, the bell. bell. Ding, ding, ding.